Hello, hello, hello. Marcy Ben from Think Premium JA. I'm actually sharing a quick bit here on internet. I'm here using a special partnership with Island Net as well. You know, Think Premium JA under a special agreement with Island Net. And, you know, Island Net has actually been in the island for over 20 years. We're one of the telecommunications providers in the island, one of three. And we pride ourselves in being a company that was built from the scratch built from the grown up on data so we can manipulate data in many ways and of course we're an internet provider so many times when i'm speaking with persons i hear about starlink and it's something that you know recently came on stream but you know it has been making big waves in the telecoms industry and it really has helped a lot of persons not just locally but internationally get access to internet in areas that typically are underserved in many areas and it's been quite helpful as a matter of fact island net has actually done several installations where we have actually provided starling for customers as a part of their internet package along with what we offer so let's actually talk about what starlink is and actually compare it with fiber internet connection and wireless internet connection so i'm going to be reading from something yes i am using a screen so if it looks and sounds like i'm reading that's what i'm doing yes let's keep up thank you darling so what is starlink so starlink is the first and largest satellite constellation using low earth orbit to deliver broadband internet capable of supporting streaming online gaming video calls and more and this is directly from the starlink website starlink.com no starlink is a satellite internet network so it's it's done using a satellite it's not using any wires or any fiber or anything like that it's actually using a satellite that's orbiting low earth so it's relatively close to the earth right and it relies so it's a satellite internet network that relies on thousands of satellites in close proximity to the earth's surface so you have different satellites communicating with each other close to the earth's surface now this constellation of low earth orbiting satellites transmitting signals from satellite to satellite as well as ground stations you know it's pinging off of some so as it's communicating from satellite to satellite it's communicating with um, ground stations as well to transmit signals back and forth to provide high-speed broadband internet services so again this is actually coming from a different website it's coming from builtin.com so just to summarize starlink internet is provided through a satellite network using a combination of a, an assortment of satellites and ground stations to send signals back and forth so persons can use internet to do online gaming streaming video calls all that stuff by having access to broadband internet so currently starlink is the first and largest satellite constellation now that's something that is actually pretty admirable many persons would have heard that elon musk is behind it and you know you have to definitely give credit where credit's due because yeah that's amazing so what is the speed that you currently get from Starlink, right? Now, the speed typically is between 25 to 220 megabytes per second, which I mean, that's pretty commendable. You know, typically Starlink users usually experience download speeds between 25 to 250 megabytes per second. That's actually quite commendable, quite commendable. And this is with a majority of users experiencing speeds over 100 megabytes. Upload speeds are typically between 5 to 20 megabytes. So um, when they're rating um, the speed of, a web, speed of a network, it's usually download speed followed by upload speed. So download speed is 25 to 220. Upload speed is between 5 to 20 megabytes per second. So that's actually something that is worth noting. I don't think many people really talk about this, but that's actually something worth noting. So in terms of the upload speed, if you need like a lot of upload speed, then you might want to pay attention to what you'd get from Starlink because depending on what you need, that upload speed might not be able to be met through Starlink. So I want to actually stick a pin on that, but it's actually pretty good. 
So if you're someone that, you know, let's say you're in an area where you don't really get a lot of internet access, this is still very good. At least it's something that's better than nothing. So again, that um, speed, the 25 to 220 megabytes per second, that's actually from Starlink.com. So you can totally check it out for yourself for more information. Um, I would want to compare it though with fiber and wireless. Now, most persons aren't on 5G yet. So I can't really say too much, but typically let's say let's say we were to use 5G, right? We're not most persons aren't really using 5G right now. Many persons are kind of still on 4G. But let's say you are using 5G, you're looking on in terms of fiber internet, it can go up to 100 mega 100 gigabytes per second, which is like bigger than megabytes just to be very simplistic <laughs> well wireless internet is between three to one thousand megabytes per second so with fiber internet you can actually get more gigabytes per second and again that's on 5g fiber internet and with fiber internet if i were to define it i would say this now that's internet that's really transmitted using a fiber network so that, that's pretty much the simplest way I can explain. And that fiber network can be run underground or can be run above ground. Right? Let's say on telephone poles, um, the cable being attached to buildings, etc. Wireless internet, that's where the internet is being transmitted from one radio station to a receiver without wires to another location. So the receiver, or let's say the access point, for example, is at one location, the radio is on a radio tower and it's transmitting the signals by that method. So it's not like necessarily sharing it through a fiber network where it's underground and it's connecting one point to another and sharing internet that way. It's actually done using just wireless. So that relies heavily on line of sight. So if there are any obstructions, then you know that's gonna affect the signal for the wireless internet that you're getting. So let's talk about the pros of Starlink, all right? So with Starlink, the advantage that you have is that you have global coverage. So it's accessible in remote and rural areas where other types of internet are unavailable, which, yeah, that's actually a real thing. I mean, there are many people that really don't have access to internet, not just here in Jamaica, but really around the world. It's a, it's a consistent um, ongoing concern and especially here in Jamaica where there are some areas that genuinely don't have reliable power that's a real issue to bear in mind another advantage of Starlink is that the high speeds are there so comparable to like wired connections which the speeds are expected to increase over time Starlink is actually pretty good and I did mention that the speeds are between 25 to 200 megabytes per second uh, that's a, that's the download speed <laughs> and the upload speed is between 5 to 20 now for many wired connections many persons aren't getting that sometimes depending on where you are you might pay at a premium to get that kind of connection so some many persons like many businesses for instance are getting like five megabytes up five megabytes down 10 megabytes up 10 megabytes down many businesses are using less than 40 megabytes up and down for the internet connection so that's as i said in comparison it's not bad but in terms the only thing is that with starlink the upload speed is not as high as like a fiber or a wireless that's my first observation um another thing with um starlink is that it's low latency so it's lower than traditional satellite internet notice it's lower than traditional satellite internet which makes it suitable for real-time applications like gaming video calls like zoom etc and it's, it, it can be deployed very quickly like you just need to buy that, that little starlink um router adapter thing I, I i don't remember what the term is called i'm sorry i i, I don't know but um you just buy that and you just follow the instructions you pay for the service and that's pretty much it and i know they have a residential and i know they have like a commercial package it's actually not bad um as i said before it can be deployed pretty quickly without really any extensive infrastructure and remember we would have um incorporated that in some of our setups for customers as well so it's not a it's not something that people don't know about the only disadvantage with starlink though and i'm going to be very honest the initial cost of the equipment depending on your budget it depends on your budget 
again, it depends on your budget. It can be, it can be higher than other types of internet. And there is a monthly subscription fee. So if you're somebody that, yo, oh, you live off of your phone data. Many persons in Jamaica are like that. Like, you know, you have a little mom and shop, mom and pop shop, your little hairdresser, your little dressmaker. You're not really out here buying like an internet package on the reseller floor. You're using, you're, you're, you're using the data on your phone and you're turning it into a hotspot. Are you just using your phone to do what you need to do? So if that is your budget, yeah, investing in styling may be a little prohibitive for you, depending on what you need it for. So that is something to bear in mind. It depends. You have persons who that's not an issue in comparison to what they're currently paying now. Just remember that that's something that you will have to bear in mind, the monthly subscription fee. The weather dependency is a real thing. Again, this depends on where you're located as well. Because, for example, in Kingston, it's not so bad. But, like, if you're in certain areas of rural Jamaica, if, you're, if you frequently have inclement weather issues, like really heavy rain, or you're in areas that have really heavy snow, you might your connection might get affected by that. So that is something to bear in mind. Again, Puss and Dog now have the same look. Some people really have a good experience with it, and some don't. That's just the reality of the situation. And I won't deny that there are people out there that have good experiences with it. It just depends on where you are. Signal interference can be something to bear in mind. So like obstruction, like trees, buildings, mountains, can interfere with the signal and impact performance. So for example, let's say you're in a basement. Your office is in a basement. You might not get as much connectivity. You're, you're um, trying to get signal in a parking lot that's underground, like two levels underground. You might not get good signal. Um, you're in a building that, let's say, has like a lot of trees around it um, that can interfere with the signal. And of course, you also have to understand that depending on where the setup is, there might be like signal jammers and signal blockers around so for example, like some prisons may have signal jammers where because they're trying to prohibit prisoners from using mobile devices and such in the prison, they might actually jam your calls or jam like certain um, Wi-Fi signals from being transmitted frequently. Even some banks do it as well. So that's something that you can bear in mind. That can affect your signal for real. Regulatory issues can be um, something to bear in mind depending on the country that you're in. I'm from the beautiful island of Jamaica um some countries have restriction on satellite internet like and so that affects how accessible it is in that area so that's something to bear in mind now islandnet actually offers wireless internet and fiber internet connections we also offer dedicated internet access and uh, we offer burstable wireless internet as well so with burstable wireless internet you can pretty much choose how you want the internet to be set up because it's dynamic or asymmetrical yes asymmetrical your upload speed can be different than your download different from your download speed i don't know what's happening with me words today so that's something to bear in mind so you can have like 40 megabytes upload and 20 megabytes download a little similar to um starlink because i think it uses um asymmetrical um asymmetrical measurements as well so yeah the terms aren't coming to me today i'm sorry yeah so the pros of using wireless internet especially if you're to get it from a provider here in jamaica just or just in general is the mobility so you can use it wherever you are in a building so it makes it easier for travelers and remote workers um obviously your cell phone can count like in terms of data so it really depends and because it's wireless it's not like you need to be plugged into a device it's not like fixed wireless where you actually have to have a cable plugged in to your device in order to work if it's like true wireless internet you can be anywhere in a building or even parts um of the area outside depending on how strong your access points are and pick up on pretty good internet it's fairly easy to set up i mean it doesn't require extensive installation but you're usually going to need a technician depending on the physical intricacies of your building the number of users what you plan on using it for and of course and of course, um, number of users, what you plan on using it for. And of course, really just the building. So for example, let's say you're in a very dense building or you're in a building with multiple stories or 
um, offices are located in different places, blocked by walls, etc., or you're across a campus, depending on where your geographical setup is, this can affect, you know, how much work and technicality would be involved in setting up. Right, and of course, if you're using like a lot of cloud based applications or like security cameras that don't have a DVR, these things will impact your setup. And typically, wireless internet is relatively cost effective. Of course, there's a monthly subscription, but it tends to be relatively cost effective in comparison to like wired options, like let's say a fiber internet connection, for example. Because with fiber internet, in order for it to be beneficial, many providers are going to have a minimum that they're going to want you to pay in order to get it. It is often at a premium. So some disadvantages of wireless internet now, it's limited range. So if you leave a part of the area, you're not going to get it. So for example, let's say you have wireless internet at home. You notice that when you drive off, you no longer get the Wi-Fi from your house. You go straight on data if you have data on your phone. Yeah, it's limited. So the signal strength will weaken over distance or depending on obstacles. So let's say there are network issues, you know, it's going to go down. Um, issues with the modem, you know, the Wi-Fi signal is going to go down. Um, interference as well so the signal can actually be jammed by other electrical electronic electronic devices and physical obstructions so for example a tree blocking where the radio is on a radio tower to the access point on your building can cause um, delays or um, really just network outages these things do happen or let's say you have other um let's say you have like a lot of bluetooth devices or a lot of other um let's say you have other um applications like let's say mesh wi-fi where a node might not be working or something like that you know this can actually affect your wi-fi signal um bandwidth limitations and speed depending on who you get it from you just may not offer the same speeds or bandwidth as wired connections, especially in crowded areas. Now, with IslandNet, you get the internet that you pay for 80 to 99% of the time. So, if you, let's say, sign up for um, wireless internet from IslandNet, you get the internet that you pay for 80 to 99% of the time. And we do the relevant work where the infrastructure is concerned to do the relevant surveys and to put in the relevant equipment to ensure that your area is covered and we use industry grade access points as well to overcome that challenge of let's say physical obstructions and because we have over 220 plus radio towers across the island of Jamaica we can easily reposition a radio to your area to get you the internet that you need and of course our contention rate is very low so you're probably at most having like 10 subscribers to a subscription unit which is actually pretty competitive so we can assure that you're getting the internet you pay for at least 80 percent of the time and again our competitors in many cases tend to offer the internet that you commit to like up to 30 percent of the time they're persons with good experiences but that's something to note and uh, yeah another thing as well is with islandnet you can actually call and speak to a live person during business hours and we can come to your location either same day or within four business days to assist you if you're having an issue so that's something to bear in mind and uh, another thing to note as well because of our service level agreement once you commit to x amount of internet you get that once the network is up it doesn't change so if you commit to 40 up um, 50 down in terms of internet for as long as your contracts last once your network is up that's what you're getting and we do our best to ensure that the network is up at least 80 to 99 percent of the time and another thing that i want to note as well is there's low latency so in terms of let's say um lags in the internet it's slow or anything like that we reduce that as much as possible by ensuring that the relevant equipment is in place to get your bandwidth sorted out. And guess what? Another fun fact to note, if your internet is moving slow, it could be a case where maybe you just aren't really managing it correctly. So if you're managing it correctly and you're letting us know what your bandwidth needs are, how you're using it, and you have like a firewall in place to prioritize certain applications, let's say cloud applications that need consistent internet, you shouldn't really have an issue. I just want to highlight all of that and you know same with fiber because with fiber for us especially with islandnet um yeah the same information applies low latency um zero packet loss for both wi wired wireless internet and fiber internet um 
service level agreement is in place or whatever you sign up for you get that at least it's 99 percent of the time the live customer support we've been in the business for over 20 years so we can totally assist you if there are any network issues or anything to do with telecoms and data we're very versatile there and we do have our security operations team as well that can assist you in answering your more technical um, um, issues where your network's concerned in terms of monitoring it, ensuring that it's up, ensuring that there are no cyber attacks or threats that hit your network that can affect not just your network connection, but other things as well. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, in terms of the benefits of fiber internet, high internet speeds, I mean, it does offer some pretty fast internet speeds. Because as I said before, with fiber internet, it can go up to like, um, what was it? I think it was a thousand gigabytes. Yeah, with a 5G, you can go up to 100 gigabytes per second. So that's, and that's actually like one of the larger me measurements in terms of internet. So that's something to bear in mind. So it does actually make the bandwidth pretty good for activities like, like 4K streaming and gaming and all of that stuff. Because the higher the quality, you know, it's going to need a high consistent amount of bandwidth so even like um voice cloud voice applications etc you know with island net especially on fiber internet once you have the bandwidth that you need you can actually have a pretty good experience especially since the fiber connection isn't really affected by line of sight so much because it can either be underground or like on a light post or something it's actually using a wire so like the line of sight thing won't really be an issue as much which actually makes it a lot less susceptible to weather changes and environmental interference in comparison to like wireless options so like um let's say a tree <laughs> blocking one the radio tower to your your building might not be such an issue because the wires what's really transmitting the internet the fiber the fiber cables were really what's transmitting the internet and of course there's low latency as well it provides like a stable connection with low latency so it makes it very good for real-time applications so less lag time less glitches less delays and because it's symmetrical like you get like an x amount up x amount down so 40 megs up 50 megs um 50 40 megs up, 40 megs down, 50 megs up, 50 megs down, 100 megs up, 100 megs down. You don't usually select like variations between the upload speed and download speed. It tends to be pretty symmetrical. So because it's it offers equal upload and download speed, it makes it very beneficial for activities like video conferencing, cloud computing, cloud voice services, all of which you know IslandNet does offer in terms of um, our cloud voice package. So that's something that you can actually DM me to learn more about. Um, with Fiber, um, it has to be installed in your location. So it's because it's um, set up where you're actually using wires from one point to another. Well, not wires, sorry. It's using fiber cables. It's using fiber cables <laughs> from one location to another to connect um, different users. It has to be set up so it's not like as easily accessible like wireless internet but island net actually does that for you so if you want fiber going to your location even if there isn't an existing route to your location as yet we can actually set that up for you it's not an issue and we actually give you the wireless in the meantime so you know you know we we, we make it interesting we make the whole thing interesting so if you want it you can have the wireless or you can do your fiber and whatever so that's something you can benefit from too um in terms of your installation challenges it does require fiber cables so people do steal fiber cables it's it's a real thing here in jamaica uh, it is a real thing unfortunately you do have people that steal that and it does cause challenges because you know you have to import the fiber cables in many cases so you know it, it can because you have to source the material and you run the risk of people stealing it that's a real thing that you have to understand it. And it can be complex, which is why you tend to see fiber being a more premium product because it just costs more to get it. And you have to go dig up ground and lay a fiber cable and all of that stuff. It, it, it is a whole production. So it tends to be a more premium product. So you tend to see people not offer it if you're going below a certain monthly charge. If you, if you opt for fiber for your business, understand that it, it is a premium product so it is going to come at a higher charge 
it is what it is and as i said before it is vulnerable to physical damage so like it can be damaged by the cables the fiber cables can be damaged by construction work let's say they're building a new development by your house or your business and it's fiber internet you're using yeah it can it can cause issues it will cause issues or even natural disasters like flooding can disrupt the service because again <laughs> it's the cave it's physically there so it is what it is but i you know i do hope this helps and just to summarize everything for you because it's a fairly long video the choice between whether or not you take starlink or wireless or fiber internet it really depends on your unique needs especially for your business like your location your speed requirements your reliability needs and your budget your budget most importantly will be what determines whether or not you choose a starlink or any of the other internet packages that element offers but you know as I said before, I'm not going to knock Starlink because it is pretty beneficial for persons who live in remote areas. But Island Net, I'm also pleased to say, does that as well. Like we actually have served persons in areas that <laughs> there weren't really a lot of options before. Like we've served persons who are miles away from the main road and they've been having consistent internet for years because of the fact that we have our radio towers all over the island and we can easily route to your locations we have a very reliable um internet connection in terms of our like fiber and our radio setup with our wireless connections i mean it's designed by man so it can fail but the reality of the situation is i am very pleased to say that our technical team does a phenomenal job in ensuring that the network is up at least 8 to 99 percent of the time depending on the package that you use and they're very quick in terms of response time if there are, there are network outages or network upgrades, we do our best to our customer service department to alert our customers. So at least you have someone that you can speak to. Like the live customer support is a nice touch. Because if you're a business owner, you don't necessarily want to have to deal with all of that stuff. And lost internet, depending on your business, can mean lost money. And you don't want to be losing money. So I do hope this helps. Um, another thing too, you know, wireless internet it does actually offer greater like mobility and it's a quicker setup because as i said before since it's just transmitting stuff wirelessly you don't necessarily need to go through all of that fiber now it provides higher speeds in terms of internet connection and it is a bit more reliable but it really just may not be as accessible to you unless you're willing to go through the actual infrastructure cost to get it set up if it is not already in your area so you know your network provider would actually alert you to that um you know we actually alert our customers to that and yeah i hope this helps hope i didn't talk too much <laughs> and if this message you know blessed you you know comment down below and say um tell me more about internet just comment down below and tell me more about internet i i would actually appreciate that so like share comment subscribe hope this added value to you hope you have a wonderful day and remember to never stop dreaming bye bye